I'm hitting record. Just let me know whatever questions you guys have at the end, but I'm just going to kind of go through my little spiel. The why of Woodlands, um, I've never heard of a missions camp, which I think is really cool. So I just got done with our Woodlands camp meeting, and they have four hours of free time every day to do awesome attractions, play in the lake, jet skis and blobs and three-man swings and zip lines i mean it's like a disney world but what i loved about this camp is for the four or five free hours a day they put us on a service project which is really cool last year or two years ago i forget when it was we built a ramp for a young man who just got paralyzed from the neck down um, so we took out their uh, deck to their front door and we put a ramp in there i just thought that was really cool when i started hearing about snowbird and their heart for missions so the teaching in the morning and the teaching in the evening will be around biblical missions um why do we come and pay money to be a part of a summer to serve someone you've never met before so hopefully when they get home they're they're thinking of oh, okay like christianity isn't about me Christianity seems to be about my neighbor and loving the least of these. And I think that's really cool. It's definitely a different vibe from Woodlands. Nothing wrong with Woodlands. I just feel like it's a really good mix to where you don't just do Woodlands every summer. You have this different option as well to do Snowbird. So as the student pastor here, the why, I think that's pretty cool to be a part of a biblical missions camp that then gives students the opportunity to serve. There's a lot of students who come home and go, man, I, I didn't realize serving someone could be so fulfilling. Like it, it just gets those juices flowing. And I, I think it's really, really good. All right, we, our camp is June, excuse me, July 10th through the 15th. Um, and if you guys are planners on the 10th, you'll need to be at the church at 2.30 p.m. Later? Yeah, dinner starts at like 5. So we try and get there like right as dinner has started. Um, normally in the past, we've gotten there too early. So we'll leave here at 2.30. And then on our way back on the 15th, which is a Saturday, um, just be following our social media platforms. And once I put in the GPS to come home, I'll literally just put that ETA into our social media platforms. It's normally around lunchtime. Lunchtime, one o'clock, somewhere in there. Um, medicine. Medicine is the student's responsibility. Um, I welcome a text to my phone that just says like, hey, can you remind my kid to take their medicine? I'm more than happy to do it. Most of the kids going on this trip, I guess with the exception of Anthony, are, are primarily high school. High school is pretty good with keeping up with their stuff. But normally like eighth grade, ninth grade, I'm fine to keep that on my radar to make sure they're taking their medicine. Because believe me, I don't want a kid who's not on their medicine. The only person that makes it really hard for is me. So I want to make sure that they're staying to their schedule. Uh, please make sure luggage is clearly labeled and that your student knows that what their luggage looks like. If I've had a dollar for every time someone has lost their luggage and then I say, well, what does your bag look like? And they don't know. I'd be a very rich man. So just make sure it's clearly um, labeled. I've seen a lot of parents just put like a strip of duct tape and get it on there and then just write their their kid's name lost luggage is an issue every year uh, money your kid will need to bring extra money not a lot I think if they're in that 40 to 50 dollar world they should have enough because there's a snack shop there's a uh, another shop that has like snowbird t-shirts and snowbird hats just get your kid cutting grass. Get your kid doing chores around the house if they want to take extra money with them. 
There is one night, and this happens every year at Snowbird, where they always want to go to a Mexican restaurant that is like two miles off campus. So normally when we get done with our service project, instead of driving back to camp for dinner, they always want to go to this one Mexican restaurant. So um, if, if financially you don't want your kid doing that, just let me know. I'll have them eat on campus. But for whatever reason, it happens every year. And then I normally just cave to the peer pressure of like, okay, well, if that's what everyone wants to do, I'm good with it. But as far as how to prepare financially, I think if, if you keep those two things in mind, you should be good. Um, okay, next thing to talk about, we will go whitewater rafting. Um, they are going to need water shoes. Um, normally, chacos are the best thing to wear. They have the straps. They kind of look like those Jesus sandals. Um, if you go to like a Miracle Hill thrift store or somewhere around town, you, you can find them pretty cheap. Don't buy them brand new because they're like $100. It's ridiculous. Um, but if you find some type of water shoe that they're comfortable with, they'll be good. And then some type of shirt that is made for cold water. The water is freezing. Like Brady Snyder last year was just wearing like a cotton t-shirt and tennis shoes. He was miserable the entire time so if you can find a shirt that um i forget what they're called but like the quarter they get it, it keeps the person warm almost like what surfers wear what's that stuff called i can't remember but like a wetsuit kind of material i hate being cold so i will wear a shirt that at least gives me a fighting chance to stay warm so we will go whitewater rafting just prepare your kiddos for that uh, technology, no cell phones. We kind of just have a week of no phones. Yep. I made a huge mistake during the winter retreat to let phones be there, and I regretted it the entire time. I think that was just a learning curve for me. Uh, do you guys have my number? You have mine. Do you guys have my number? You're good. You want to get a hold of your kid? Just call me. We'll make it happen. We are living in a tent, a really big tent with bunk beds uh snacks and drinks are okay to bring uh they can bring an eno for outside they can bring it uh, a lot of kids like to hook up their tents from like one tree to another if it's next to our tent or our little cabin i'm i'm fine with that um kids have brought box fans you're good i'll make sure to get you this recording um if they want to bring a box fan there are a couple outlets they can plug into because it does get pretty hot and muggy. Um, food allergies. If your kid has food allergies, just talk with me. We'll make sure to take that food. Does Anthony have a food allergy? Okay. If anyone's listening to this recording, if you have food allergies, please communicate with me before we go. Uh, what to pack. I'm just going to fly through this real quick. Uh, twin size sheets and a sleeping bag. So this is really weird. It is hot during the day, and then it gets freezing at night, even in July, which is really weird. So they're going to go to bed with, like, light sheets. They'll probably wake up at 3 in the morning and be really cold. So that's a weird... But if you sleep on top of your sleeping bag you'll be fine. And if you need to sneak inside the sleeping bag, he should be good. Uh, beach and bath towel will be really helpful. And then just real athletic clothes. So gym shorts, t-shirt should be good to go. When we're on the work site, please wear clothes that you are okay destroying or getting pants on or pants on, getting paint on your pants possibly ripping your shirt like if it gets snagged on a screw or a nail it needs to be work clothes that you're not upset if they get messed up um this won't matter for anthony but a one-piece bathing suit uh insect repellent and sunblock is huge i cannot tell you how many kids will be fine monday get totally burnt on tuesday and then they're miserable wednesday thursday friday saturday 
because they just got sunburnt so, so bad. Uh, flashlight is going to be really important. There's a couple night activities we're going to do where they're going to need a flashlight. Toiletries and a rain jacket. If you have those two remaining things, you're good to go. Uh, because we don't have cell phones, two things are going to be really important. A watch, because I get it. How do we normally tell what time it is? We look at our phones. So if you have one of those cheap wrist watches, you'll be good to go. And a lot of kids bring those wind-up cameras. Because I get it. A lot of kids are bummed they can't take pictures. Bring a wind-up camera. You're good to go. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to give one cheat to the showers. And I'm really happy I'm putting this on this recording. The showers, you have to hold a chain. Anthony probably knows this because he was on the winter retreat. You have to hold the chain. And if you let go, the water stops. So a lot of kids bring a carabiner and then something like a water bottle and fill it up. Oh. Hook the water bottle to the carabiner and then on the chain so they can be hands-free. Redneck ingenuity at its finest. But pretty much, and we'll end with this and then I'll take any questions you have. Typical day is wake up, chapel. Um, then we have uh, breakout sessions after the morning chapel. We do lunch. And then from lunch until dinner is our work site. Then we come back, dinner, evening games, evening chapel, we go to bed. It's pretty simple. We'll go whitewater rafting on Friday, the last day before we go. Okay. I know I just talked for 12 straight minutes. Is there any questions you have that I can help prepare your family? So, a Bible then? Yes. Yes. Bring a Bible and a notebook. Okay. Take notes. Because um, most kids have their Bibles on their phones. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything we can, or he can do to help prepare Anthony, like, you know, drill skills and yeah. stuff like that? So thankfully, they have one snowbird rep on site for every work crew, and that's normally that guy's job. Um, however, once I figure out what we're doing, I'll let you know. And then if you want to kind of get him prepared beforehand, like the right way to hammer a nail or use a drill bit, a lot of the times they, like the first couple days, they'll put us on a site that needs to be painted, right? Like anyone can paint. But then by like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sometimes they move us to different work sites where sometimes we're replacing a roof. Their people that are there are really good at coaching them. Like, they know they have middle schoolers and high schoolers helping them. So they don't assume that these kids know what they're doing. And if it's big power drills, you better believe that an adult is with them the whole time. So there shouldn't be a whole lot of pressure on you to, to do that for him. He should be fine. So if they're on a roof, then sunglasses and hats maybe. Yeah. Yep. Anything that will help them feel comfortable in the heat, I'd pack with them. Um, I'm not a big hat guy, but if I have sunglasses and sunblock, I'm fine. But if a hat can make them more comfortable, absolutely. Yeah. North Carolina in July is just, ugh, muggy. Muggy and hot. Yeah, good question. Anything else kind of swirling around in your mind? Anybody else? Yeah, I know. Believe me, everyone else will be getting this recording. When I get the text message or the email, they're just going to be sent this link. Love you guys. Bye.